What is up, everybody? Is it Michaela here? And this outfit was what I actually wore when I got and defended my master's thesis for chemical and biomolecular engineering. That sounds super cool and impressive, and you'd expect it to be a victory. Except the fact that it was coming off of the heels of quitting my intended PhD program at that university. Even though I got my degree, it felt like a defeat, and it felt honestly like I had failed. My professor was essentially like, look, you can try to find another lab to work in, or you can exit the PhD program with your master's and try to find a job. Now, about three years later, I am a process engineer, a biomolecular engineer at a great company, and honestly, I'm so thankful that I chose to leave. So while I keep building my machines, I've got some great stuff planned. I'm, I'm coding my computer to solve a Brooklyn Nine-Nine riddle. I am building a coaster that can keep your drink warm. Cool stuff. But while those science projects are in the works, I want to talk about that experience and give you three reasons that quitting my PhD was the best thing that could have happened to me. So let's get started. So this one's a little bit esoteric, but for me it felt very important, and that is understanding the difference between depth and breadth learning. Depth learning is when you love a subject and you want to master it. You get super obsessive about it, you want to learn everything you can about the details of that subject. The random facts no one cares to know. Origins for things no one would really ever question. And you want to stick with that for a very long time. These are the Serena Williams or the Mozarts of the world that have a profession, have a passion, have that thing they love so much and that's all I want to do. A PhD is going to be five to six years of your life studying the same thing. Even if your lab is a little bit flexible on what projects you can work on, the field that you're in is the same field. You need to be okay with that. You need to take a look at yourself and really think, do I like learning about the same thing over again and over again and mastering and getting into the nitty gritty for years? For a long time, I, real I thought that because I got good grades and I all my teachers said I was smart, that I was cut out for a PhD. What I didn't realize was that I'm really cut out for breadth, and breadth learning is exactly what it sounds. You love learning about everything. You could be super obsessed about one thing, a month later, you're on to something completely different. And this doesn't even have to be just related to science, this could be other hobbies too. I thrive when I have the freedom to follow my inspirations wherever it leads, and it usually leads in a bunch of different places. Part of the reason I started this YouTube channel was because I love building things, but I don't like building just one type of thing. I'm not the type of person to take a subject and be super detail-oriented about that one subject. And I think that mentality played a role in my PhD experience. I got very bored of my PhD after a relatively short amount of time, and I found that to be a huge stumbling block for most of my PhD experience. If I was more receptive to that when I had started my college experience, I probably wouldn't have gotten a PhD. I might have gone into scientific consulting or done something that has many different roles that you're juggling at once, because I thrive in that chaos. Being a master has its shortcomings, and its shortcomings is you don't get the time to study other things. And for me, that was too big of a cost. Okay, second reason is that I felt like I was kind of pushed into it when I was in college. And I think this is a phenomenon that is very common for many high achieving collegiate STEM students. Tell me if this scenario is familiar to you. you. You get really good grades, you do well in all your classes, and your professor goes, hey, such and such, I think you'd be a good fit for my lab or you should think about doing grad school. That's kind of what happened to me. I was getting good grades, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know what I was really passionate about. And my professors go, Michaela, you're really smart. You should get a PhD. And they based it basically off of GPA and the fact that I was relatively interested in their courses. And I didn't really think critically about it. I was like, okay, <laughs> sure. Like, <laughs> like John Mulaney's like, okay, like, I guess if that's what I'm gonna do, I guess, uh, they literally said you get your grades are too good to not get a PhD. As if the only people who are intelligent enough to get good grades are people to get PhDs, which is so not true at all. Um, but I was like, I guess that's what I'll do now. I didn't think about the fact that I'd be doing the same thing for six years 
or the fact that it wasn't about getting grades anymore. It was about actually pushing forward in something that you, in theory, would love. And that's important. You don't want to get pressured into that. It feels like a lot of times for STEM students, people who get good grades are fast-tracked into a graduate degree. But if you're not passionate about that graduate field, you need to really think about that because getting good grades will not help you here. So being able to leave that situation, finally take my destiny into my own hands, make a decision that I wanted to make for once, not scramble to find another advisor who would take me in, but go off on my own and try to make something out of what I've learned was scary. Like I barely had money to pay rent, kind of scary. But once I was able to strike out on my own, not only did it give me the confidence to know that I will be okay no matter what happens, but it's allowed me to look critically at what I really love to do in my life and push my life in a direction that isn't dictated to me and isn't told to me. It's super important. Don't fall into the trap of thinking because you're smart, you have to do a PhD. And don't fall into the trap of thinking that if you don't do a PhD, you're dumb. There are so many intelligent, smart, creative, amazing people out there that aren't good at science or don't have a PhD, and that's okay. Right, Charizard? Charizard agrees. And the last reason I am happy that I left was because I felt trapped. Imposter syndrome and mental health issues plague the grad school community. It plagues the PhD community, it plagues med school. I could make a million videos, and I might, about mental health in academia because what I saw was not okay. And when I was in that situation, I felt trapped. I was doing something I wasn't passionate about and I didn't feel like I could leave. I was working stupid hours. My work was never done. I wasn't taking care of my physical body. I wasn't feeding that creative passion that I love so much. All I was doing was working and being terrified. Working and being terrified were my two things that I did. By no fault of anybody else, but that that's just the system. If you get into a situation and you're not passionate about it, you could really, really be in a dark place. Luckily, there were exit strategies that I could take advantage of. But some students, be it because they're in debt, be it because they've invested so much time and they can't see beyond the sunk cost of quitting, a myriad of other reasons, will stay in that trapped environment. And being able to voluntarily leave that was one of the most empowering feelings of my life. It's easy to get mad at a person and to leave a person, but it's really hard to leave a system. I know that my mental health was very poor in grad school for many reasons, but one of them being the expectations and being trapped in something that I, I didn't feel a passion in. So my advice is never underestimate the power of taking your life into your own hands and leaving. You can. Your life is meant to be lived in a way that makes you the happiest and most expansive and creative and gives the most to the world that you can give. If your PhD isn't doing that for you, it's not what you need to be doing. So there you have it. Those were my three reasons why leaving my PhD was one of the best decisions I ever made. If any of these things resonate with you, please leave a comment, leave a question, give it a thumbs up, give this video a like, because I think that there's a lot of mental health issues that I want to talk about further uh, that are not addressed. And I think that it could be a really, really, really good discussion. So again, subscribe to my channel if you want this or my other regular science building content. Got a lot of fun projects coming up, so all of this is going to be happening. Uh, and I can't wait. I just can't wait to make more things for you guys. We're going to be making some cool stuff. I'm working on a coaster that heats up your drink. Built out of Legos and a Peltier module. This is pretty cool. Anyway, subscribe if you want to see some of that stuff. And... I'll talk to you later.